Ladies and gentlemen, this is Rex, and this is the beginning of everything, the Big Bang. By the channel Kaskazad in a shell. How did everything get started? Has the universe a beginning, or was it here ever since forever? Well, evidence suggests that there was indeed a starting point to this universe we are part of right now. But how can this be? How can something come from nothing? What about time? We don't have all the answers yet, obviously. And yet, so let's talk about what we know. Yeah. Uh, you know, th th there was lots of theories floating around that, uh, you know, where did the universe start? Or is there a such thing as start? Right now, since we know how, you know, the uh, universe has a beginning uh, because of the Big Bang, but when uh, people didn't have the idea of Big Bang, everybody just floated this idea. And, you know, just, <coughs> you know, knowing how all the, f you know, f physical laws of things work, how the, you know everything in the universe work usually people just like you know what that could this could be like universe is continuous or all the other theories maybe universe uh, is you know infinite and you know universe came from another universe multi-universe or whatever things like that but nobody thought they could start with just a one small point and expand from there until obviously Kepler thought of that so you know Kepler you know came up with this big bang theory first, at first people were like hmm i don't know but then slowly as you know the more and more this uh, saw the results of different uh, tests and things and you know they start to think about it look at that big bang actually makes sense it's still you know even today lots of people like hmm yeah okay big bang is the you know best theory we have right now about this uh, but uh, you know there is still you know I feel a bit weird about it like there could be more to this than just Big Bang so also people don't believe in Big Bang too not believe in as not they like uh, you know that flat earth bullshit not like that but is there like you know yeah, we need more stronger evidence to this uh, maybe there is more to this that, than just what we know of today about the Big Bang so yeah this is gonna be a fun video I've to quite a few Kaskazar videos already if you haven't seen them check out the cars as a playlist I've written for it Kaskazar reaction uh, check out the playlist too like Oli Sakashi production internet students CGP Grey uh, Tears Zoo yeah what? let's watch this one the beginning of everything the big bang the idea that the universe was suddenly born and is not infinite up to the middle of the 20th century most scientists thought of the universe as infinite and ageless yeah until Einstein's theory of relativity gave us a better understanding of gravity and Edwin Hubble discovered that galaxies are moving apart from one another in a way that fits previous predictions. Yeah, <clears throat> obviously Einstein told us that gravity, uh, you can think of it as a force, but it's not much of a force. It's literally space-time curving and, you know, collapsing in itself and, you know, curvature of space and time. That's what gravity is. It's not much of a force because, you know, obviously I've, people said it in some of the previous videos in this, like how gravity is the weakest force. Obviously, I know that, but you need to understand the strongest force in the world is black holes gravity, basically. The tidal force is there. And that is also done by gravity. So, you know, gravity is not much of by a force. It's more of a, you know, space-time continuum, you know, bending and things like that. So, you know, when Einstein told us that, you know, we start to understand the world more better. At first, people like, you know what, the, the way how big the universe is, observable universe is big enough. God knows what an actual universe, how big that could be and how, how many stars and, you know, galaxies are that. So, you know, probably it, this is just infinite. People really just thought that. Uh, you know, Kepler came along and just like, you know, yeah, Big Bang Theory. People started to thought about it and it kind of started to make sense. In 1964, by accident, cosmic background radiation was discovered, a relic of the early universe, which together with other observational evidence made the Big Bang the accepted theory in yeah. science. Since then, improved technology like the Hubble telescope has given us a pretty good picture of the Big Bang and the structure of the cosmos. Recent observations even seem to suggest that the expansion of the universe is accelerating. But how did this Big Bang work? How can something come from nothing? Let's explore what we know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this triggered a lot of different topics, right? Like how expansion is working, how expansion is increasing rather than decreasing because of the dark energy, how that will lead to, you know, I guess, t you know, t everything tearing apart and dying, one of the ways universe could die. So, yeah. We can ignore the beginning part for now. First of all, the Big Bang was not an explosion. It was all space, stretching everywhere, all at once. 
first of all, what the fuck does explosion even mean? It's space. Explosion implies there's a wave, there is a bang. You know, there is no bang in the space. I mean, I've said that in the past, and people actually argue, oh, yeah, there could be a bang in this. What, what are you talking about? You bang in a, in a sense, like if uh, there is a titanic explosion, and if, uh, you know, uh, there is some gases around it, and if you are in the, those gases, those gases could have, you know, could vibrate and create this kind of, a, you know, uh, bang type of sound or something. I don't know. Bang implies sound. There is no real medium. It's space. So it's expansion, sudden expansion not big bang even though in you know uh, in astrophysics basically anything space related people usually you know name their th events and things basically the simple way so even kids can understand it so understand where the big bang water came from but it's a big you know expansion the universe started very 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 small and quickly expanded to the size of a football the universe didn't expand into anything space was just expanding into itself the universe cannot expand into anything because the universe has no borders. Yo humans, I'm really happy for you. I'ma let you finish, but your brains are really not that good at visualizing that stuff. So if you can't, don't blame it on the science, but... Primate brains that develop to avoid being killed by tigers and making babies. Yeah, that, that, that's way too big. Uh, somehow, if you can shorten that, that should be a T-shirt slogan right there. Nah, I don't care. People have lots of fucking paragraphs on the T-shirt. So you should write that on T-shirt. Because this explains a lot of things. People are like, hmm, that's absurd. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, because your sensory it comes from not dying in jungle a long, long time ago. You know, your sensor usually is, you know, is there a tiger there? Is there a fire there? That's your sensory. That's why. There is, by definition, no outside the universe. The universe is all there is. In this hot, dense environment, energy manifested itself in particles that existed only for the tiniest glimpses of time. From gluons, pairs of quarks were created, which destroyed one another. This is ridiculous. Look at this. 10 to the power of minus 32 second. That's way too small. Like, we can't really process it how fast that is. So it's like, you know, it's like instance. All this would have, if, look, if we were there, excluding how is that even possible if you were there to see this that would imply we are outside of space-time continuum how we are not dead how is this explosion won't kill us ignoring all that if you were there to witness it like how family guys sometimes shows in one of the episodes if you're there to witness this we wouldn't even realize all this is happening because it's that fast you know i guess you know atoms and molecules start to form up uh, you know basically in a you know, second or two or something so for us it a sudden expansion and there you go molecules start to form up perhaps after giving off more gluons. These found other short-lived quarks to interact with, forming new quark pairs and gluons again. Matter and energy were not just theoretically equivalent, it was so hot, they were practically the same stuff. Yeah. Somewhere around this time, matter won over antimatter. Today, we're left with almost all matter and nearly no antimatter at all. Somehow, one billion and one matter particles were formed for every one billion particles of antimatter. Instead of one massive ultimate force in the universe, there were now several refined versions. Yeah, okay, antimatter lost only because whatever matter would have lost, we would call it antimatter, because clearly we are not it. So, yeah, obviously in, in any universe, antimatter would lose, because any matter that lost, we would have called it antimatter of it acting under different rules. By now the universe has stretched to a billion kilometers in diameter which leads to a decrease in temperature. The cycle of quarks being born and converted back to energy suddenly stops. From now on we work with what we have. Quarks begin forming new particles, hadrons like protons and neutrons. There are many many combinations of quarks that can form all sorts of hadrons but only very few are reasonably stable for any length of time. Please take a moment to appreciate that by now, only one second has passed since the beginning of everything. The universe, which has grown to 100 billion kilometers, is now cold enough to allow most of the neutrons to decay into protons and form the first atom, hydrogen. Imagine the universe at this point as an extremely hot soup, 10 billion degrees Celsius, filled with countless particles and energy. Over the next few minutes, things cooled and settled down very fast. Atoms formed out of hadrons and electrons, making for a stable and electrically neutral environment. Some call this period the Dark Age, 
because there were no stars and the hydrogen gas didn't allow visible light to move around. But what's the meaning of visible light anyway? Yeah, <laughs> dark, you don't know, because we don't know much about it. It's because it was literally dark. I love that, you know, anything space I love that. It's very simplistic, you know. There was literally no light, so let's call it dark era. Fuck it, why not? Even though in history, anybody calls it dark era, it usually implies that we have no knowledge about it because, you know, the knowledge is lost. You know, the big massive hole that, you know, sucks everything in, black hole. The biggest event that ever happened was a massive expansion, Big Bang. So, you know, the sun spots is really simple, right? I like that. When there's nothing alive yet that could have eyes. When the hydrogen gas clumped together after millions of years and gravity put it under great pressure, stars and galaxies began to form. Their radiation dissolved the stable hydrogen gas into a plasma that still permeates the universe today and allows visible light to pass. Finally, there was light. Okay, but what about the part we didn't talk about? What happened right at the beginning? This part can be defined as the Big Bang. We don't know at all what happened here. At this point, our tools break down. Natural laws stop making sense. Time itself becomes wibbly-wobbly. To understand what happened here, we need a theory that unifies Einstein's relativity and quantum mechanics, something countless scientists are working on right now. But this leaves us with lots of unanswered questions. Were there universes before our own? Is this the first and only universe? What started the Big Bang, or did it just occur naturally based on laws we don't understand yet? We don't know, and maybe we never will. But what we do know is that the universe... See that, maybe we will never will. That's a strong statement that I feel like is kind of true. We all have these assumptions that since we are making great discoveries, we will always make discoveries and we will learn everything. That's not how things work, right? Uh, you know, when you start to lift, let's say, weights, when you are you new know, but start you know, trying to do bodybuilding and things, when you start to lift weights, you can add weights every week, every week, and you know, for months you can feel like you can do this, you know, forever. But at that point, you realize like that's not possible. There will be a time where I won't be able to lift. So, you know, that that's how I th see and think about this. You know, right now we are making discoveries after discoveries, and probably will make that for a long, long time because we hardly know anything. Whatever we know right now is nothing compared to the what is there to be learned. So there will be a time where we come to a limitation of what we can learn and not. We might not be smart enough, we might not be, you know, uh, the way we are, the physical form, the way we are formed, uh, the way our brains work, we might not be smart enough and capable enough to learn something. So we might not know what happened before Big Bang, because, you know, we are bound by laws of physics and bound by the space-time continuum, we can't know what happened, you know, before all this started, before time started. But, you know, maybe we can make theories and, you know, uh, those can make sense. So I think a you know, big collapse uh, kind of makes sense. So, you know, everything just expands, expands. One day collapses again into a small ball and then just like how, you know, how star expands and then collapses in itself, you know, and, you know, have this, uh, you know, uh, titanic explosion supernovas. It could be something like that, like, you know, everything collapses inside, pressure increases and it explodes again. That is the Big Bang again, so cycle repeats. It could be that as we know it, started here and gave birth to particles, galaxies, stars, the Earth, and you. Since we ourselves are made of dead stars, we are not separate from the universe. We are part of it. You could even say that we are the universe's way of experiencing itself. So let's keep on experiencing it until there are no more questions to ask. Yeah, this is more like a therapy for, humans are therapy for universe, right? I mean, humans are the universe's way to figure itself out. Damn. So, <clears throat> yeah, it could be, you know, or maybe we don't realize what space is completely, you know, maybe we definitely don't. There is lots of things we need to learn about space and what, what is fabric of space and time. So, you know, just like how there, we know there's, there's such thing as virtual particles and things, one day we might come to realize that, you know, uh, space suddenly creates all this energy and matter. It's, uh, you know, a certain place uh, for whatever reason we might learn in the future. So, Big Bangs are, you know, inevitable. 
There was always a big bang. You know, that those big bang will you know, push everything around it even more far distances. In that way, this universe will keep expanding because of these big bangs on all different areas. Maybe. This is just, you know, the possibility is endless, but that one fear I still have that, you know, we might not be able to learn everything that is to be learned because we might, you know, come to some kind of a, you know, limitation. People say that, you know, we are creating AIs now that will be a million times more smarter than any humans ever were when, you know, we perfected. Maybe AI will be able to, you know, learn things that we can't. Yeah, so, yeah, who knows? All right, people, that was the beginning of everything. The Big Bang by the channel Cosgaza in a nutshell. If you like my next of food, like, subscribe. Check out the weeks I did. There's a link in the description. Check out the cards or the different playlists. Check out the end cards, and I'll see you next time.